Sometimes when we are processing data, we find that we would like certain data to be in multiple columns, but for whatever reason, all of that data is crunched into one single column. Right? So now, in order to get the data into the form that we want, namely in multiple columns, we use the function called dplyr colon spread. So spread is the function. Now, if you recall, earlier we had used the gather function to take data that was in multiple columns and bring them into one column, gather them up into one column. Here we are looking at the reverse operation, taking data that is in one column and spreading it across multiple columns. Okay, so here we are taking an example of this column called type, okay, and of course the column called count. Okay, so we've got this data, we would ideally like this to be, that is the count column, we would ideally like this to be in two different columns. One column called cases, and another column called population. So that is spreading, right? So we would like to take the data in this column and spread it across two columns called cases and population, okay? So this is what we have, and this is what we want. Right, that is, we want to take the cases, 745, 2666, so notice they are all here, and the population values, this, 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 etc., they are all here. And the new columns have the name, cases, and populations. Of course, those column names were derived from the values in this column called type. Okay, so that's really what we are trying to achieve. And of course, the name of the function spread is quite intuitive because we are taking the data in this one column and spreading it across two columns. Okay, so this is what is going on. So you had cases and population, they have become the column names and the individual value of the cases is going into this column and the values of the populations are going into that column. Okay, so you can say spread table two key equals type value equals count. Okay, so very simple. So you're saying the, the name of the new columns is going to come from the column called type and the values for those two new columns are going to come from the column called count, period. Okay, so we can write it like this or of course we can like write it using pipes which we love so much. So we say table two, pipe it to the function called spread and because we are piping it, you don't really need to give the name of the tab table, right? We're just saying spread and the first argument is implicitly what's coming on the pipe. And then we say key equals type, value equals count. As simple as that. Okay. And of course, we would prefer this piped version because many times what we are not going to, what we're going to do is not just spread the data and then sit idle. We're going to spread the data and then perform some other computations on it. In other words, take the result of this whole expression, pipe it to something, pipe that to something, pipe that to something, and maybe finally pipe that to ggplot to produce a plot. Right. So because of that, we prefer to do uh, use the piping in, in performing these kinds of operations. Of course, this is correct. There's nothing wrong with this, right? So if for some reason you want to just create a new table, which is in the new form, then you could use this and assign the result to, the, to a variable and then save that variable or use that variable in some other form. That is fine too. So both are equally correct. But if you're going to do operations in chain, then piping is better. Okay, so here we've got table 4a, gather, again, remember in table 4a, we had the years 1999, 2000 spread across multiple things. So we can say table 4a, gather, 1999, 2000, key equals year, value equals cases. And so then what will happen is the values in the columns 1999 and 2000 will go into one uh, column, right? And of course, you can also take uh, table 2 and spread the two things, right? So what you see is that there is a slight asymmetry in how gather and spread are called, right? We would think since they are opposites of each other, they would be highly symmetric, but there is an asymmetry, okay? The reason for the asymmetry is simple because when you gather, you have to explicitly mention the columns you are trying to gather. But when you spread, you don't have to explicitly mention the new columns you are creating. Right, so for example here, we are just saying key equals type. We are not enumerating that the types are cases and population, right? There may be, it depends on 
how many unique values are there in this column called type, right? So that is why there is a small asymmetry between gather and spread. When we gather, we explicitly mention the columns we are gathering. When we spread, we don't have to explicitly mention the resulting spreaded columns. That is why there is an asymmetry that's going on here. So let's see here. Here we've got, uh, we are creating a new table called stocks and the year is 2015 and 2016. Those are the two years. And for each year, we are mentioning the stock price for each of the two halves of the year. The first half of 2015, second half of 2015, first half of 2016, second half of 2016. And here, of course, is the stock returns for each of these. In other words, in 2015, during the first half, the stock gave us a return of 1.88, presumably percent, etc. Okay, so that's the data. So we create this table and it looks like this, right? 2015, first half 1.88, 2015, second half 0 0.59, etc. Okay, so this information is what is created. So we created this as a table, not we didn't use the triple function. If we had used the triple function, then of course, the uh, the way in which we provide the data itself will look like a table. Okay. So now, suppose we want to take the data in uh, this and then spread the year and return. Okay. That is, we've got so year we've got 2015, 2016. Okay. So we want to spread this across two columns, right? Then what's going to happen is 2015, 2016 are going to now become two columns and it's going to look like this. Okay, but suppose you spread it and then you gather it again. Then you expect to get back the original table, right? That's That of course will happen. So you spread it and we are gathering it. Of course, this is not something we would ordinarily want to do at all. Why would you spread it and then gather it and try to get back the original thing? You would not do it. But I'm showing it here for a particular purpose, right? So we spread it and then we gather now the year and return, okay? And 2015 to 2016, right? So we've got uh, the spread has this, right? So you've got year, you've got return. And we are spread, gathering those two columns, year and return, into uh, columns 2015 to 2016. Okay, and then you get back the data which is, uh, which looks like the original, right? So in terms of data, this looks very much like the original. The column names are in different order, that's fine. But there's a very slight subtle difference when this has happened, right? So if you look at the, uh, at the year column, right? Initially, the year column was a double column, 2015, 2016. Notice that it has become a character column here. Okay, that is because when you did the spreading, the values 2015, 2016 became column names, 2015, 2016. And when they became column names, and then when you regather the column names, when you gather back column names by using gather, the resulting column is always a character column. So that's what happened. So other than that, everything is exactly the same between the two tables, but uh, the data type changed. Okay. Now, of course, if the year was originally a character column itself, then they would, we would not have seen any difference at all. But because of the fact that the year was originally numeric, it then became character because of this convoluted process that we just went across. Okay. So this is something that we need to be sensitive to that uh, when we spread and gather and so on, sometimes the data types may change. Okay, take a look at this command. Table 4a, gather 1999-2000, key equals year, value equals cases. Okay, now this will produce an error. It says position must be, must be between 0 and n. So why does this code fail? Right, so just take a very close look. This is something I just want to highlight, right? So when you gathered here, 2015, 2016, etc., it didn't. This not a problem, right? This looks very much like code that we had written earlier, and yet it seems to fail. That is, we are saying, gather data from the columns 1999 and 2000, put the value in a new column called cases, and for the newly created column. Uh, with the column names, 
call that new column as year. That looks fine. Okay. The reason this is failing is notice 1999 and 2000 are numbers, right? Whereas we want them to be column names, right? So as you understand, when your column name is a number or it's non-standard, you have to surround it within backticks. That's the problem. You're missing the backticks here and therefore R is thinking, the gather function is thinking that these are column positions, not column names. So to make it understand that these are column names, surround them in backticks. Okay, so take a look at this table and see what's going on, right? You spread this and it'll fail, right? So we've got Philip Woods, age 45, height 186, Philip Woods, age 50, and then Jessica uh, and etc. Okay, so what's going on here is that when you do people, people is the is the table that we are using, you spread key value, right? In other words, we are saying, take the column uh, key, right? Take its values and make them into columns. So the new table will have a column, of course, called name. It will have a column called age. It will have a column called height because those are the two values in the key column. And then the corresponding value would be put in there. But this one will fail if you try it because for Philip Woods age 45, Philip Woods age 50, right? So there are two values for Philip Woods for the same key called age, right? So obviously the spread function doesn't know what to do. Do I take 45 or do I take 50? Because there are two values. That's why it's failing, okay? So that means that whenever you're doing a spread for every key corresponding to a particular uh, entry, for example, Philip Woods here, for every key, there should be only one value. There should not be multiple values. If there are, it'll fail. So obviously here, the, we can solve the problem by saying, why is it that Philip Woods is having two different ages? Well, the Philip Woods is having two different ages because these two rows represent data at different points in time. So maybe if we add a column called year, then there won't be a problem, right? So in the year 1990, Philip Woods was 45. And in the year 1995, Philip Woods was 50. Then there's no problem because now the resulting data set will contain name, year, key, and value, right? So then it won't fail anymore.